but I do see myself on the screen. So good. All right. Uh, I think we are actually uh, rolling along at this point. So again, I'm Dr. Eric Potter. Uh, many of you know me. Many of you uh, may not know about functional medicine, sanctuary functional medicine, or myself and my practice here in Franklin that uh, we've been here for a few years. But um, what you do know is that there is a lot of debate. There is a lot of chaos in our world right now, in our nation particularly, and the, even in our community here, if you are part of Williamson County or the Middle Tennessee area. Uh, and it comes down to two questions, mask or no mask? So my goal today, uh, besides just opening up a dialogue, uh, is helping you who are willing to come on board and sit down and listen for a little bit and talk uh, to, helping you to know how to discern truth. Uh, I've already experienced some pushback in the last 24 hours from just trying to invite others to this uh, dialogue today. Uh, gotten called to quite a few different names, uh, told that I am crazy, I'm a quack, I'm doing all these crazy things, that I'm evil for even, even suggesting that people don't wear masks. But the problem was they don't know what I'm going to say. I'm not actually going to tell you to wear a mask or not wear a mask. My goal is to actually help you think about what the answer is, because when it comes down to it, we really want to discern the truth. We want to know the truth. Uh, we are a nation uh, where we have been through great hardships before. Uh, when we fought World War I, World War II, different about, we have been willing as a people to give up many things, many luxuries, many freedoms in order to win battles when we knew that it was a true battle that we needed to be fighting. However, the question is, are we really fighting a battle? Is this really what we need? Uh, so we need to know whether or not that's true. So hopefully others have had some time to join us. Uh, so I'm going to uh, spend this first time uh, talking uh, about discernment um, because, again, we all kind of know why we're here. Uh, there's a lot of confusion and coercion uh, over masks with this COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. Uh, there's changing stories. There's really actually unsettled science. Uh, many live in areas where masks are mandatory, uh, but many have conditions which make masks harmful to wear all the time. We all want to be healthy without other harms coming to us, and we all want the truth to be carried out personally for ourselves and families and also in our communities. So the ground rules for today are going to be be nice to each other and respectful to different opinions. Uh, there's room for different opinions. Uh, and the golden rule and that's the golden rule. But beyond that is never, ever, ever walk away from this saying Dr. Potter said so-and-so mass did this or did not do this or did that. I want you to make up your own mind uh, using the tools we're going to talk about. And then we're going to discuss some of the things out there, the questions you need to be asking others when they are either saying you should or should not be wearing masks. So my goal is to help you see through the confusion to learn to discern for yourself. This is what I can try to do in our patient care at the office. This is what my upcoming immune prepper video training course and discernment course uh, that will be coming out here in the next few weeks that we've been producing for the last several months will include in much greater, much greater detail. But I want to equip you to find the truth and to spread the truth, not just to know it for yourself, but to help others find it as well. To accomplish this, I will spend some time sharing six steps to clearing up the confusion. And then we're going to have a Q&A discussion. Uh, I've already got a few questions. If you want to send a question in, we'll try to start from the top. Uh, I have uh, three or four questions already been sent in. Um, but with that, I'm going to target six steps. But actually, start with two through five. We're going to skip number one uh, and number six for the moment. Number um, two would be stick to the truth. Number three, hold others to the truth. Number four, discern the truth. Number five, engage. And again, number six, we're going to hold to the end. So saving those bookends for the punchline and focus on the meat in the middle for now. So the second step in sorting out what the right thing to do with masks are is stick to the truth. If we are going to find the truth and disseminate the truth to others, we have to stick to the truth. Don't take shortcuts posting things you like that support your position, but you haven't double checked. You will ruin your reputation, your credibility, and you'll lose opportunities to influence others when you actually do have the truth. The little boy who cried wolf will eventually be ignored. And so with that, don't just propagate simplistic arguments. Oh, you know, yes, 
Use analogies like the chain link fence and mosquitoes if they are appropriate. But if that's your main point, is that a chain link fence won't stop mosquitoes, you really need to sit back and listen or find something that actually you can stick to provable points, uh, things that actually are going to convince people because there is too many emotional arguments on both sides of the fence uh, to just use simple arguments. So third, hold others to the truth. When others post or share or swear at you with simplistic slogans like, don't kill my grandma, or don't let them get away with it. you know don't let them get away with it ask them questions ask them why's how when why not ask what difference does it make ask them for proof so they can say you're going to kill grandma well what makes you say that me not wearing a mask is going to kill grandma make them go beyond the clichés and propaganda now same goes for the other side if you are not wearing a mask and somebody wants you to you need to tell them why that you are not wearing a mask. Don't just say, well, because I have a right or I have. Yes, that's true. The constitutional questions, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to dig into those today. But uh, make, make each side go beyond the cliches and propaganda. And be nice while you do this. We're all a little worried. Some say they're not scared, but still, we all want to do the right thing. We are all trying to protect ourselves, each other, our loved ones, and trying to have that so-called return to normal uh, that we keep hearing is going to happen or maybe it's not going to happen. That's a whole other uh, discussion on another day. But be nice to each other. So fourth, discern the truth. Get past the fallacies, past the most emotional manipulations about grandma or how we're doing. You know, we can open the economy if we just wear masks. Um, I don't think it's that simple. Get past your own biases. Be relentless in making sure that you're using logic and reason and wisdom to work through this complex issue, which is a big part of it. This is not simple. This is not, well, do I wear a mask? Does it protect me? Do it protect you? No, there are so many layers to this, no pun intended with a mask, but we need to use, dis uh, use wisdom and logic. And so my discernment course that will be coming out and the two uh, sessions of that in our MU Prepper course are going to go into that much de greater detail, detail, how to measure and discern fact from fiction, truth from hype. Fifth, you have to engage. If truth is going to emerge, if truth is going to win the day, you must engage not only with those you agree with, but those you don't agree with. Learn from everyone. You may be wrong about something. I'm wrong about things. I learn from my patients all the time. They bring me studies. They bring me things to read. And I realize, oh, I think that's a good idea. I may try that. Sometimes I'll say, you know, there's some other science that says that supplement or that medication or that therapy is not a good idea. So we need to learn. If we, you know, keep our ears closed all the time from differing, uh, differing uh, viewpoints, we're not going to learn anything. Uh, we're searching for truth and then influence as much as you can. If you're not in the game, just on the sidelines saying, oh yeah, I know this, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, you're not helping other people find the truth. If you can stick to the truth, hold others to the truth, and discern rather than just repeat the same old talking points, you can engage with our leaders and we can win the debate. We're going to again come back to number one and number six, the bookends. But before you get lost thinking this talk is not about mask, realize that one of the bigger issues is that right now, at this point in time, we don't have the whole story on mask. We have politicians changing their story. We have prestigious medical journals retracting their stories. We have the Surgeon General, we have the CDC, we have the WHO changing their stories. So who are you going to trust? As I discuss in my discernment course, we have liars, greed, and also well-intentioned people who are sometimes just wrong. From week to week, the story changes. From one expert to the next, we have different opinions, all claiming to know the true answers. And we have all these wonderful um, mathematical models that say if three out of five people wear a mask, 80% of the time when they're out in public, we will have an X percent decrease in the number of new COVID cases and deaths. You know what? Those mathematical models, I've talked about this before, all depend on different numbers. That, you, know, you can change that at the drop of a hat. It's just another statistic that can lie through its teeth. So we want to make sure that we're using wisdom and not just um, pipe dreams that we're actually doing something that's going to help. 
We want to make sure if it is something that's going to help, great, let's do it. But let's not do it just because some politician says so or because some mathematician with this grand model thinks it's great. So with that, we need discernment applied. You need to be equipped to decide for yourself and not have to trust the experts. I repeat, then you can engage our leaders and put some truths into their heads and your friends, your family members, people at church, people around you. So let's look at the questions at hand. Mask or no mask? A simple yes or no question. Well, not that simple. There are more layers that we can address today, but let's hit a few. So first of all, there's a few questions. Are masks effective to prevent COVID-19 in hospitals versus in public spaces? Are masks safe in the general public? Can masks be required by government indefinitely? Are masks the tip of the iceberg for a larger agenda is what many are asking. For any of these questions, do we have definitive proof? And what are we trying to do with masks in the first place? So let's take these one at a time. Are they effective? Well, it depends. It depends on which mask, how it is used. Some like the N95 medical mask are better than others. They do have some studies protecting against bacteria, maybe viruses, but viruses aren't as good protection. Some are much less effective depending on which study you review. So there's a lot of mixed data. I listened to a podcast of a, an expert this morning driving into work who basically with new uh, Robert Gallo, who helped discover HIV uh, and has been in interacting with people in the aerosol science, so those who study how things spread, chemicals or particles spread out in a, uh, an environment when they're spit out or sprayed out from industry. Uh, he's been working with this for 30 or 40 years. Um, he's, he was saying there's not good science that absolutely prove that masks are perfectly effective. Uh, in some sense, we might be making people think they're safe uh, when they're really not. Would you send somebody across a bridge uh, that had a, you, you say, oh, it's safe, but re in reality, there's a bunch of the uh, supports that are out from underneath it or have been washed out. It may not be that such a great idea to make people think, oh, masks are the be-all, end-all. Um, so with that, uh, if they are less effective, are paper cloth masks worth the trouble and harms? Should we get everybody N95s? Because um, in studies, some are more effective in one setting, like the hospital, uh, where they're worn, you know, 12 hours straight. Uh, taking off and on actually is bad. You're contaminating yourself. Uh, some only work when you put on and take them off appropriately. Uh, if you take them off the wrong way, you're actually putting more of the virus or the contaminant uh, into your face uh, or on your hands and increasing your exposure. So. And also, are they effective for what? Are they effective for prevention? Uh, do they prevent asymptomatic uh, spread? Um, and does that even exist? That's another question. We don't understand this virus enough to say, yes, this is somehow protecting. You're not coughing. You're not sneezing. You're breathing uh, or singing, heaven forbid. Uh, yeah, no pun intended, heaven forbid. Um, are you spreading virus? If you're not doing that, really, do we even know that? Does it spread that way? Um, there was one study, the whole initial study saying, oh, asymptomatic person spread it to a bunch of people. Actually, when they went back, they printed that without actually talking to the person who they said was a spreader. And it turns out she actually had symptoms, fever and cough. Uh, so she was a symptomatic spreader, but they were saying, oh, look what it does. Actually, you know, there's some studies showing that there is minimal spread from the asymptomatic ones. Um, now, yes. Um, if somebody has symptoms, they're coughing and sneezing, uh, likely masks do decrease that. Now, definitely for bacteria, I saw a thing on one of the news channels about people in a lab coughing, you know, talking, singing, coughing and sneezing with and without a mask and showing a plate that was 24 hours incubating um, in a heater so that way to see if bacteria grew. Well, the problem is, number one, that's bacteria, not a virus. Number two, you had to incubate for 24 hours. And number three, they're completely avoiding the fact that, well, what if you fight that, it gets in your body, but you fight it off because you've got adequate vitamin D, which is another big thing. Why don't we advocate, you know, force everybody to take vitamin D? Well, uh, that's a medical procedure. Well, wearing masks is a medical procedure as well. So then, is it keeping me safe or you safe? So why force others to protect me? 
if it's not a direct threat. We don't have final studies, yet many are claiming that we do. We have some studies that suggest protection for the wearer. We have some studies that suggest protection if others wear them for us. But again, better masks like the N95 medical masks are more effective than surgical or these cloth masks, especially if you're uh, like our uh, governor did, buying a bunch of sock masks uh, that basically you could pull and see holes through, which is really not going to do a whole lot, uh, but that's why they gave them out for free. Um, so the science is not settled. Uh, the Cochrane Review, which is a major medical group that looks at uh, studies, a bunch of studies to try to get a final answer on whether or not something should be settled, and they said there's only weak evidence at best that masks are helpful, and there's some other groups that have done the same thing. Um, so that's why any given leader we hear can find a study to quote that masks do or do not work. Um, I'm collecting article references to share in the coming days here on this page as well. So then, okay, if they work or not, but are they safe? So many people, oh, you're safe. Surgeons wear it all the time. They're fine. Nobody's ever, well, you know what? Why did we have somebody wreck uh, on a road because they're wearing a mask in their car and they passed out? Well, again, don't depend on that. That's an N of one, meaning only one person. Don't say, well, Dr. Potter said this person passed out driving while wearing a mask, so we shouldn't wear a mask. Nope, said that's not allowed. Don't do it. What I'm saying is we need to look at studies. We need to look at the, all the evidence uh, and see if it makes any difference. There's actually studies showing a mild increase in carbon dioxide when you're wearing masks for multiple hours, uh, but these were in healthy working persons. We don't know what they do in ill. Ill people have lung disease, heart disease, other breathing problems. And there's also studies showing increased headaches in those who are wearing them for multiple hours. Uh, and those were even in the healthy pe people and those were in nurses. Uh, there are many conditions where logically a mask could have negative health outcomes. Lung disease, heart disease, PTSD. If you've been mugged and so you're having to wear a mask or you're seeing people wearing a mask, it's going to be a little traumatic. Children shouldn't be wearing masks. Somebody who's disabled who can't remove it when they feel short of breath, developmentally delayed individuals, might be harmful. So can they be mandated? Does our state or national constitution permit these mandates? Again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not digging into this, but you need to ask these questions. How long can the executive order be extended? Indefinitely forever? Does a blanket mandate harm some? How much harm is permissible? If a mask sends one to the hospital for wearing it, is that okay? Or what if it harms a thousand or ten thousand? Is there an upper limit which we should not tolerate? In every other medical therapy, we look at number needed to treat and number needed to harm. If 1,000 people wear a mask to save two COVID infections but hurt three with other healthy, uh, other health conditions, is it worth it? Can we protect with less restrictive means? America is known, again, for self-sacrifice from past wars, depression-era times, and the good old American work ethic. If the experts can convince us that it is the best thing, most of the pre-millennial generations at least will do their part. However, if the message is unconvincing or continues to change like it has, we're not going to have any trust in uh, those who are trying to lead, and many will resist. If a leader doesn't know, they should have just said, we don't have all the evidence, but we're working on it. Instead of, oh, yep, absolutely, don't wear a mask. Oh, don't wear a mask. Oh, don't wear a mask. Oh, it is good. Oh, it's bad. It's safe. It's not. All it is is confusing the heck out of the rest of us, and no wonder we don't trust them. So let's talk, is there a deeper or more sinister agenda? I'll let you chew on that yourself. I have my opinion. At least I will say that there's no real leadership with solid answers. We are led by many fools across the board with only a few leaders with real insight or courage to do what's right. They're either intentionally misleading us or are truly foolish. And what is the point of masks, lockdowns, and more? First, it was flatten the curve. Then it was protect grandma. Then it was so we could reopen and return to normal. Then it was until a therapy was developed. Then it was until a vaccine came out. Don't get me started on that one. Actually, get me started. With that, uh, listening this morning, I've listened to that since I wrote this earlier, was the fact that um, when Robert Gallo and his partner who came out and announced the discovery of HIV virus as a cause of AIDS, uh, that partner of his said basically, oh, we're going to have a vaccine in three years. That was about 36 years ago now. We still do not have an HIV vaccine. So these guarantees, oh, 
coronavirus the vaccine? Sure. I know, yeah, we didn't get one for SARS. We haven't figured out one for MERS. We haven't figured out, we've never had a coronavirus vaccine before that worked, but we're going to have one this year. Well, maybe next year, we're going to still be waiting a while. And there's some other issues that we can talk about another time with that. So don't promise me a vaccine uh, until you've got it um, and ones that's safe. So with all this, the goalposts have been moving. Uh, they move again and again. Now with more tests, cases are going up, revealing how widespread it really probably was in the first place. But deaths are going down. Yes, the media is still screaming, pandemania. The New York Post just said, we may be wearing masks for years. All right, reality check. They don't plan on returning to normal unless we make it happen. This is not about what they say it is about. So with that, what can you do with all this? Go back to step number one that I held out on. We need to pray. So you may not be a person of faith, but if you are, I'm going to say, ask God for wisdom. He's the one that's got it all. And ask for truth to be revealed. And then you go through step two through five. You stick to the truth. Don't take shortcuts. Hold others to the truth. Ask question after question after question until you get real answers. Don't settle for the cliches. Discern by setting aside biases, your own and others. Measure and weigh the arguments, the studies, and make a decision. Engage the debate. Force others to stick to the truth. And build your wisdom. Finally, step six, repeat. The same two, one through five, day by day, week by week, until the truth is known and truth wins the day. My opinion? Eh, sorry. Sometimes beneficial medical therapy in the right situation, it should be applied with discernment only to those who will benefit more than they will be harmed, and they should not be forced to receive a medical therapy against their will. This is a standard of good medicine that's always been, why are we changing? Politicians who mandate masks are either playing God or they're playing doctor. And sometimes those two do get confused, if you know what I mean. Don't take my word for it. Discern for yourself. So, what questions do you have for me? Uh, hopefully, that all came through well. Uh, but I want to take a few questions that I've already got uh, that have been sent. Uh, is wearing a mask mostly for the protection of the person wearing the mask or for other people? Uh, so that is a million-dollar question. A l depending on which study, sometimes one, sometimes the other. It's not clear. And it's also if you wear the mask correctly. For example, let's just be clear. This is not how you wear a mask. This is not how you wear a mask. This is not how you wear a mask. See? So... You're talking about sealing off, making it tight, and snug on the sides. Now, even then, in case you can't hear me with a mask, <coughs> there's air coming out when I cough, <coughs> and there's going to be air coming out when I sneeze. So even under the best circumstances, stuff still gets out. Maybe it catches a large percentage of it, but there are some studies that say it catches less than 30%. You know, well, hey, that lowers it a little bit. Does it make a real difference? Other studies say, oh, it catches 90%. Who knows? As the podcast I listen to, and I will share that podcast on here, um, put that link on there. It's Ulster Home Update was the name of it. Uh, a, a, he's been a doctor for 34 years. Uh, he's worked with Gallo, uh, who discovered HIV, others in the aerosol sciences. Again, those who study, if we cough, even with or without a mask, how things spread. If you see light coming through a window, you see a little dust. Is how those particles spread from one person to another. Uh, for example, the fact, and this is what we look at in um, functional medicine, if you, uh, those who live in a home together often start developing the same microbiome on their skin and their gut, the same bacteria that live inside them because they're breathing in and out each other's bacteria all the time. But what does that make for uh, make a difference for viruses? So what am I saying? There's a lot of information out there. It's not settled science. There are some studies that say it might help and some say it might not help. Uh, the Cochrane Review, again, a great source they have made. I don't always agree with them, but you know I have to admit they do try to put the data together from all 
the studies out there on a topic and answer it. And they've looked at masks, whether they do or do not protect. Uh, and there's weak evidence at best. It is not a close, yep, absolutely. If we just everybody wear masks, we will suddenly uh, bring it into COVID. There's no study. You can look at other countries. Oh, did they bring it into it? Well, if you do 10 things, so if you walk into my clinic and I give you 10 therapies uh, because you're tired and you're, you're not tired anymore, which one of those 10 worked? The only way you're going to know is if you only do one therapy. So if you look at these countries, oh, they wore a mask. That's why it worked. Well, they did a lot of other things besides just wearing masks. Besides the fact, if I take 10 people in Japan, they have completely different susceptibility than 10 people in America, 10 people in Africa, 10 people in Russia. There are a lot of genetic differences that may have played a bigger role in whether or not somebody wears a mask. So there's a lot more than just saying this country wore a mask and this country didn't and look at the difference. So we can't make this, again, too stinking simplistic. Don't get caught up in the simple answers. So the answer is we don't know yet. Uh, can wearing a mask cause health issues for the person wearing the mask, especially due to adverse oxygen levels? So with that, uh, I mentioned a study where there were, they said clinically insignificant, meaning they don't think it caused effects, uh, carbon dioxide going up. Uh, there's another study that looked at whether or not for patients who need to have a mask but need high flow oxygen, extra oxygen, because even in room air they can't breathe well, um, there's a difference in the oxygen levels from a, wearing an N95, the best mask out there, everything short of being in a virology lab where you're in the super suit uh, and nothing can get in you, uh, get to you, at least hopefully not. Um, in that, the oxygen levels are lower if you're not putting oxygen in there. So there is a little bit lower level, uh, especially in, um, I haven't seen any studies and this is something I want to look up. If you're hot and sweaty, that mass is moist, are you going to lower the amount of oxygen that can get in or carbon dioxide that can get out? Uh, so that is an issue. Um, again, you have a lot of people that may have uh, weak lung muscles, um, severe COPD, uh, neuromuscular disease where they can't push air in and out as well. If you did a pulmonary function test on them, uh, they just don't have the force uh, in their lungs or in their chest muscles as much. So yes, they could tear out uh, tire out more easily, especially trying, I saw two people playing volleyball outside with mask on, and I'm like, I'm glad they're probably in their, they were probably in their 20s, but I'm like, that really doesn't make sense, uh, that they were 10 feet apart playing in 90 degree weather with mask on. Uh, so we don't have perfect studies. You can put somebody on the internet and do all these different things, but again, we need somebody, uh, people who look at um, OSHA, Occupational Safety Healthy Administration, there are some changes. They do have effects. I mentioned studies that looked at there's increased headaches for those who are wearing masks um, for 12-hour shifts. Uh, so, and again, for most effectiveness, you need the mask the whole time. Every time you take a mask on and off, it lowers the effectiveness of whether or not you're going to get exposed to what you're trying to avoid in the first place. So, with that, uh, you can also have patients, if they've been abused, they've been um, attacked uh, wearing a mask, uh, if somebody was holding a hand over their face while they were um, trying to harm them in some way, that could cause significant psychological harm. And then when you decide to go up to that person because they don't have a mask in whatever big box store that you want to and say, you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask, uh, excuse me, that's none of your stinking business to put trauma into somebody's life because you're scared of a little virus. And yes. It's a virus that can make some people sick, but you don't need to be harming others to protect yourself. That's not America. That's not America. Again, I repeat myself. With that, is there a consensus among physicians as to the effectiveness of wearing a mask as it pertains to the spread of COVID-19? Um, I answered a little bit of this before, but no. Uh, there's some studies that say yes. Some say maybe. It is not a clear answer. It would be nice if we had a study yes. If you have a group of a thousand people here and a thousand people here, these wear masks, these don't wear masks. These are exposed to COVID-19, you know, five people with COVID-19. These are exposed to five people with COVID-19. And we see how many of the, out of that thousand get it, get the disease itself. Yeah, I think you already get it. We're not gonna have that study 
whoever's going to sign up for that uh, is a little bit crazy. So with that, we're, we do not have a study that says, yes, these are effective. Uh, in fact, again, I reiterate that we have studies that show N95 do a pretty good job, those medical masks, but surgical masks, somebody in what I listened to this morning said they've never had an actual study that shows surgical masks protect the wound where somebody's surgeon's operating on somebody. Uh, it's not clear that it actually lowers the uh, operative infection rate, mask or no mask. Uh, so that, you know, yes, washing your hands, wearing gloves, those things, but the mask, uh, at least according to him, I need to double check that again. That was just this morning, like 7 o'clock, uh, and I've done a lot since then in the clinic, uh, both preparing for this and caring for patients. So with that, we don't have a definitive study that surgical masks do it. N95 probably do uh, help some, but then you get these cloth masks, especially, you know, a sock mask that you can see through. You know, leaky mask, we talk about leaky gut in our office a lot, but leaky mask. Uh, we talk about the fact micro, uh, 0.1 microns are the size of some of the viruses. The holes in these masks are 10 to 100 or even bigger. So you could have a ton of those. They say, well, droplets won't get through that. Well, we don't really know exactly how this is spread. So what if that droplet gets caught in your mask, then dries, but the smaller droplet or that virus spreads through the mask because you're still breathing in and out of that. Or you look at the N95, actually the problem, N95 protects you, but it lets air out with a little valve. So you're actually can still be squirting virus out into the air and you're, oh, I'm protecting everybody else. No, you're protecting yourself. So when it comes down to it, no, we do not have clear cut evidence, undisputable that masks work. You're like, well, it's just a mask. What if it does help? Well, it is a mask. It's a medical therapy in the way it's been forced on people. What if it hurts? We've got to consider what harm it may do, whether it's physical harm, psychological and emotional harm. We've got to weigh all these. It's not as simple as everybody on the uh, Facebook or on social media or wherever you're looking want to make it. So I'm going to look. Those are the three questions I had from earlier. I'm going to see. I've not looked down to see if anybody else have left questions. Let me see if I can get this to work where I can read something. Give me just a moment. Now there's 40 comments, so somebody's on here leaving something. So let's see if we can find some questions. Yes. So Marsha mentions one study showed that wearing a mask can trigger a mast cell reaction if you have mast cell activation disease. If so, would a doctor's excuse be sufficient? to show if you haven't, uh, if you aren't wearing a mask. Personally, 99% of the folks I see wearing a mask are either not wearing the right type and not wearing it properly. We address most of those things. I have not seen the studies about mast cell, but mast cell is when the mast cells release histamine. Uh, if some people do that when they get too hot, when their oxygen levels fluctuate, uh, when they have emotional stimulation, uh, and they can have symptoms from anaphylaxis to rashes to breathing trouble to migraines to GI symptoms. So that is a possibility. Um, I don't, I will keep that in there and see if I can find some other information. Let me, again, trying to get, and take the ones I can see and then try to get more open. Uh, there are people saying Europe has done a better job in managing this. Of course, we're not comparing apples to apples. So you started later and have different variables to play. Uh, your thoughts? Yes, it's, we cannot take a broad view across this and say, oh, well, they did this, it should work over here. So, hey, um, you have breast cancer, so you took this medicine, it worked. You've got leukemia, so we're going to give you the same medicine. That may or may not work. Uh, you've got pneumonia, and you've got a leg infection, a skin infection. Will the same antibiotic work? Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Uh, somebody comes in and they're deficient in B vitamins, but I give them more D, they're not really going to get better. So we want to and again, there's multiple factors. It may be mask 
plus genetics plus the temperature change plus there are some other things that uh, they're higher in D uh, baseline, which is a big thing. Uh, patients who have a higher D level are less likely to get it uh, and less likely to have a severe form of COVID-19, which has been pretty, pretty clearly studied and shown uh, with that. So again, we need to look at our country. We try to learn from others, extrapolate, but it's like if you do a study on monkeys or rats, if a medicine works or does not, it does not automatically mean that it works in us. Um, we are like but different. So the same goes for people in different nations. So that is definitely something we've got to keep in mind. Um, trying to get this to come up where I can see all the comments, but for some reason it's wanting to be difficult. Of course, it is Facebook, you know. Don't tell them I'm sa I said that just yet. All right. Ron, help me get some more comments up here for people. Let's see if I can get some more. Ron is my IT guy in another part of the office. So that he, oh, here I just figured out how to make this work. Let me go up here and try to get through as many of these in the next 15 minutes. Well, it was there. Like I said, it is Facebook, you know. Nope, that's not what I wanted. That was my last video, gave me so forth. All right, worst comes to worst, I will try to answer these later, but I'd really, really like to get your answers to you as soon as possible. Oh, I love trying to do this. Can you just send me an email, Ron, with the with the questions? Copy and paste the old-fashioned way. Ron managed to stay six feet away from me, so everybody in the government should be happy that I'm not breaking any laws right now. And yes, we are trying to follow the government uh, right now in being good citizens, um, but uh, at the same time, I'm working to again enlighten enlighten both with this session and with the immune prepper course that will be coming out and our discernment course that will come out later all righty ron has yep i got it all right so Looking forward, not now. Start over, you're here. A lot of people saying hello. If the virus is 0.1 micron in surgical mass, filter between five to 20 microns. How do, so how do I get that on here, Ron? Ron is gonna tear everything down. And I'll give him a hard time about that later. Actually, oh, come on. Sorry for the tech. Oh, I found it. Got it, Ryan. Virus is 0.1 micron and surgical mass filter between 5 and 20 microns. How do masks help? So the answer that they try to give us is the fact that those viruses travel in droplets who are big, too big to go through the holes. Uh, but, again, we don't have the science to know for sure if that's completely true or not. So um, we do not have subtle science on whether the mask 100%, definitely don't 100%. Uh, they do probably lower how many viruses get out, but the question is how much. So if you know there's a 50% chance less that you're going to get it, will you still want to wear a mask and go into a place? No, it's a false sense of security at best. Um, 
although also I would argue whether or not we need to be afraid of something uh, instead of developing herd immunity where we can actually uh, get rid of this to a low level where it's not causing so much trouble. So let's see what other questions here. Does wearing masks for long periods of time hurt the immune system, especially if one already has lung issues? If shortness of breath over time, hypoxia, low oxygen, is triggering inflammatory uh, markers to go up in your body, yes, you could be uh, interfering with immune suppression or your immune system, uh, and you could be hurting yourself. Uh, also, if you are cause, so raising cortisol, uh, causing hormonal imbalances, causing just like people with sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is when you stop breathing as well overnight, so your oxygen goes down and your carbon dioxide goes up. Those patients have more heart attacks. Uh, they also have more adrenaline. They have more high blood pressure. Uh, so they definitely have other negative effects when you're not breathing oxygen uh, as well as you should, uh, as often as you should. Uh, Robin, is wearing mask likely to make wearers more susceptible to viruses and bacteria when they eventually stop wearing them? Uh, there's not a good study on that, but again, if you take a mask on and off and you trap some viruses in, you are just basically shoving viruses up your nose and down your throat. Uh, so when you finish with a mask, you should throw away. Uh, so that way we make sure we get our empty landfills filled up with a lot of mask. So yes, I'm being sarcastic, but yes, we are trashing our environment as well if you want to get into that world of things. Uh, by producing billions of masks, what we may or may not need, we don't know for sure. Uh, seems to be a divide between what OSHA says, this is a healthy, healthy oxidation level, and what the Conti is requiring in masking. Oh, yep. For any of us with allergies, sinus issues, breathing normally, the mask is not possible. Why is healthy oxygenation not brought out in this discussion? Because, it's again, it's simplistic. Protect. Grandma's going to die. We're not going to open the economy. It becomes one thing, the whole cognitive dissonance. We can't try to balance multiple factors. Our leaders look like they're making things based on one thing, but not taking other things, the big picture, into consideration. Um, I have two friends share studies that support the use of masks. Studies I'll read advocate that since we have a vulnerable population, we should mask. I'd like to hear your response to that, as well as the current discussion on asymptomatic transmission. Um, so with that, you can go out there and you can find studies for most things that say just about anything you want. Uh, there was a time in medicine when they would tie off an artery in the front of your chest thinking it helped your heart, but actually when they did studied it, this had been done for years, they realized, oh, it didn't do anything. There's a lot of things that we've determined. I talk about this in one of my discernment videos is the fact that Half of what we've known in medicine over the last 50, uh, is it 44, 45 years, is actually wrong. So every 45 years, half of what we know right know for sure, sure right now as dogma is actually wrong. It's either obsolete or we have a new study that shows we were wrong about it. So or we have a new and improved something. So you can find two studies, and you can go out and find two studies that say it's not working at all. That's what Cochrane review found is. There's a mix, some yes, some no. There's no clear answer. But somehow, one study about hydroxychloroquine suddenly means we shouldn't use that medicine. Whoops, we retracted that study because somebody lied, somebody hid information. So what the reality is, we really don't know. So should we be mandating everybody to do something that might be harmful when we don't know if it will help and it doesn't matter what you or your doctor think is best for you? No. I think we need to let this be an individual decision. Use good science. Stop making things up, what our leaders are doing, just to uh, deceive us or to mislead us. Oh, mass work. Mass don't work. Mass work. Come on. Admit when you don't have the full story. So, uh, look at what else. One study showed, uh, yeah, talked about that. Talked about Europe. Bottom line, there are a lot of unknowns. Let's extend grace each other and heads up for the governmental authorities who want to force a medical procedure on the general public. Yes, and that really is, we need to admit when we don't know, which is a big part of this whole problem. We can't, we don't have leaders who will admit when they made a wrong turn. They took a wrong turn. When you do that, you back up and start trying to go down the right, or you admit, I don't know. 
Let's get some more information before we force something on everybody. Uh, do you suggest all medical professionals, doctors' offices, should wear masks on patients who come in? Uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't. Right now, we're kind of following what the rules are until we can convince others that the rules uh, don't necessarily make sense. There are some that should wear a mask and some that shouldn't. And we need to actually base this on science, not just what a fear and pandemania is. So what is, what is a healthy dose of vitamin teenage boys? Uh, I'm assuming vitamin D of average build. Uh, you need to know, you really want a level of at least 30, but preferably closer to 60. So we, you may, some patients, I might check the levels, it's already 50. They don't need to take anything, they're out in the sun. Others, they're out in the sun all the time, they're only 25. So really you need to get somebody to check that, then that way you could say what that child or person needed in terms of dosing. Uh, love that number one was pray. Yes, God is still in control. He works for all things for good. Those who love him are called according to his purposes. And he also calls us to be his hands and feet. We are also called to go out into the world and spread the kingdom, to spread truth. Uh, Jesus said he is the truth, and we need not just when it uh, concerns salvation, but when it concerns people's well-being, that's what we do at Sanctuary. We're trying to set people free from chronic health issues, restore health. We need to do that as a community and not enslave people to fear. Uh, do you know what OSHA's oxygenation requirements are? It seems like it goes against masking. I have to look that one up. Uh, as Keith said, yes, wearing a mask is a medical procedure. Uh, Jennifer, can you speak how the viral load is increased by wearing a mask? Came in late, so you might have already discussed. So, when you're wearing a mask, if you have the virus, it's going to be trapped in here. One of the things that they have looked at in some studies, the higher viral load you have in your body, the exposure, the more likely you are to get sick. I have not seen any studies. I doubt they're going to do this. But if you keep trapping all your virus and it keeps going, it's like if you were throwing up would you want to swallow your vomit again? All right, yes, simple analogy, but really what we're thinking about is you're coughing up a virus. Do you want to trap that out or are you trying to get rid of it? If you're not sick in the first place, do we know that it's not going to build up more virus? We don't know. I'm not saying it will. We don't know because nobody's done a study uh, and we need some more information before we force people to do a medical procedure. Um, the vitamin D studies to preventing COVID, I will have to, there are some, I've saved a link and it was somebody, two or three people have posted that in Facebook on my page. I will try to send that link back to you later. I've taken a note. Um, herd immunity, will you speak more of the pros and cons of the approach in conjunction to overloading the hospital system? So herd immunity uh, is debated. Uh, when it comes to vaccines, oh, we need enough vaccinated to have herd immunity will protect. And now it's like, well, herd immunity won't work with COVID. We have to have a vaccine. It, 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 they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. So the point is herd immunity is the idea that if enough people get sick and are immune to it, which we don't even know if you have lasting immunity, especially if SARS-CoV-2 becomes different, changes, which is mutating as we speak. There's tons of uh, dozens of different uh, variations of CoV-2 uh, SARS-CoV-2 right now, uh, we don't know whether that will work or not. So we, and even if you give a vaccine to type A15, will it work for type B, C, X, Y, Z? We don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of missing information and we're making decisions based on things we don't know yet. So herd immunity though is a sense if we, enough people get sick with something, it's not going to spread as easy because that person if I got sick and everybody around me has already had it, they're not going to get it. Hopefully that works for uh, COVID-19, but we don't know yet. Uh, part of the proper use of cloth masks in terms of disposal being reused going in and out of stores. So if you put it on and you take it off, really, you should throw it away. Because once your fingers go inside here or your fingers go in out here, you need to throw it away and wash the hands. Now, don't recommend using a bunch of hand sanitizer that has other dangerous chemicals, but these hands need to be washed with soap and water because if you take this off, but whoops, you got something on the inside, you just inoculated yourself. Um, bandanas, scarf, really do not fit. They're gonna leave a lot of holes. 
Um, there's not really been any studies on bandanas, scarves, whether or not that they have any benefit in protecting people or not. I can't say that much. Uh, using essential oil, I don't know. Essential oils, if you breathe them too much, can be irritating, uh, depending on, uh, that's a personal issue that I can't. Could you hurt yourself? Yes. Uh, will it probably? No. Um, yeah. And yes, Jenny, uh, it is true that there are studies, New England Journal of Medicine, I think at the Mayo Clinic, also in one of in my discernment talks that are in my immune prepper course, uh, two major journals say yes, about half of what we know is probably obsolete in about 45 years. It's more important increasing the positive or fatality rate. I thought I increased. So the most important thing is, is the death rate. Don't flood the hospitals. We don't have enough ventilators. Let's clear something up. If you're a hospital and you're running at 30% capacity in your ICU, you are going broke because you're paying for space. So most hospitals are running at 60 to 80%. I worked in a hospital for four and a half years. We would intermittently have 100% capacity filled, and we didn't have COVID. It might be during flu season, or it might be 20 people with strokes all at the same time. But the idea that, oh, we have 75%, only 75% capacity, or eight, actually, that's a pretty good number. We have a lot of open beds, and the death rate's going down. Yes, we have more people because we're testing more, and the ones that are showing up positive aren't as sick. So actually, that's a good thing. Um, that we have and this whole, you know, that's another statistic. Oh, 80% of beds are filled. Yeah, but that's normal. That's normal for this time of year. So they're making some, a mountain out of a molehill or a, a lie out of a half truth. Um, seems that we were told that masks work. Many of the mask manufacturers themselves state their masks will not prevent the spread of COVID. How can these masks meet the requirements of our leaders? Basically because the companies are not going to guarantee it because they would get sued, well, I got COVID wearing your mask. So they're going to deny it. So pretty much the truth gets hidden because everybody's afraid of getting sued. Uh, but that is a, is a good question, Larry. Yeah, again, admit when we don't have the full story. And there's somebody posting from OSHA, community use of mask, from Health Affairs, I have to look at that. Uh, this will be saved on our Facebook page because I'm getting ready to come to the end. Um, so Ashley's asking for a quick recap. So I'm going to close things up with this is if you want to know the truth, you can't depend on your leaders. You're going to have to pray for God to reveal, give you wisdom. You're going to have to stick to the truth yourself. Don't settle for half truths or lies. You're going to have to force other people to give you the truth by keeping asking them questions. You're going to have to say, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? Don't take the easy emotional, don't kill grandma stories, uh, or we have to do it for the good of our nation. That's not definitely clear. Uh, you want to discern. You want to look, get away from biases, fallacies, both yours and others. You want to engage with others. You're going to learn more. I've learned more from listening to others, uh, even this morning, listening to podcasts, listening to uh, here, reading comments here, there'll be some things that I will learn from that. Uh, and then we go back and do that tomorrow, and the next week, and the next month. Keep learning. We don't have the full story, so we're going to have to do those things. And ultimately right now, as I said before, the mask, it's a medical procedure that should be individualized, free to choose or not to, and don't be shaming. Let's close it out with that. Don't be shaming everybody. You don't know what that person has been through wearing a mask, and you say, well, you need to protect me. Put your mask on to protect me. Well, you need to consider that they may have a good reason. So don't go yelling at people about whether they don't have a mask on. They may have major psychological issues with that because they were mugged or raped. Just get over yourself and stop being afraid. You've got a mask on. Wear your mask. I don't tell somebody else to go get chemotherapy because I'm afraid of cancer. I take care of myself. So with that, have wisdom. We need to, as much as we can, submit to our authorities, but they are serving us. So learn this. So when you call in to your authorities, your government leaders, you can say, these studies, and send them. So it's, they don't, they're going to like, ah, somebody's telling 50 people to call with the same story. No, if they hear, oh, this person's actually reason. 
people know that, they're going to realize, oh, there's more to this than just a campaign to call in and stop mask mandates. No. Give them real information. You know it and share it. Spread the truth. Share the truth. Stick to the truth. And keep praying until we as a nation, as, as we as a people here, get through this together. So thank you for joining. Uh, you can leave other questions. I'll try to get back to them. There's a few uh, posts I'll put in here so people can come back later.